Hello everyone, um, this is Robert Tyson here. I'm an instructor at Mitchell Community College. I'm also a technologist that's fascinated with cybersecurity and everything that connects together. Um, I have a special guest here with me today, Mark Champa, right? Champa. Champa, who is an author and I teach at Western Kentucky University in, in technology and um, enjoy a lot about cyber. Yeah. yeah. So we're here at the NCCA IA conference, which is a conference of educators and educational content creators that come together and, and share um, knowledge, but also share some of the resources they're working with. Um, I'm particularly interested in hearing from Mark on his cybersecurity knowledge. Um, as well as some of the things he's brought to the conference to share with us educators. So one of the questions I have for you, Mark, is everybody has their own definition on cybersecurity. What is you, what is cybersecurity to you, and why should someone learn it? Wow. Cybersecurity to me is primarily the defenses that we have to use today in order to keep ourselves secure. I know that's a really, a really broad definition, but there's so many aspects of cybersecurity. I just try to keep things just, just as broad as possible. Um, why we should learn about it today? Wow. Um, the number of attacks that just keep happening are just exponential. Uh, I saw a study recently that there are over 300,000 incidences of malware that are released daily. So you start to add that up and you can just see what we're up against. Um, it's, it's unrelenting, it's just gonna continue, just gonna continue to grow. So yeah, it, it, it's all about defending ourselves and trying to keep our data secure. Wow, that's good. It's kind of scary, right? <laughs> like, uh, and it's only going to get more frequent. Absolutely. Because Absolutely. of how everything's connected, even the yeah. bridge, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. Bridges. Yeah, Internet of Things devices. Just uh, my students were telling me the other day, yeah, they were listing off all the things that they currently had that were connected. And it was, you know, fridge and washing machine and light bulbs and doorbell and on and on and on and on. You think, Man, just a few years ago, we wouldn't even thought about having those connected, but now they all are. Right. And what are the security implications of that? Yeah. yeah, that's crazy. I saw one thing where it was it was on Vice, I think. Vice okay. News. They had a teddy bear that had been hacked. Oh man! As it, I guess it records. Yeah. And then it uploads to some cloud. But the vendor wasn't keeping up with the firmware. <laughs> hacked a teddy bear. Right. A teddy bear. So, so somebody's so, resume, right? Right. Yeah. Right. <laughs> So what is a job role that students, and maybe even particularly um, community college students, can obtain in cybersecurity? Oh, wow. Um, I think, Robert, you want to look at both the short term as well as the long term. In the short term, someone who graduates from a community college it's probably going to be looking at a more technical sort of role, an entry-level technician who's going to be working with more senior technicians in terms of configuring equipment and just learning the security posture of the organization. The long term, however, is that opens the door to just so many different areas in cybersecurity. You know, there's the technical, there's the administrative role, um, cybersecurity analyst is, is really growing. Um, and in terms of job opportunities, think about the city of Philadelphia. There are just under six million people in Philadelphia. Okay. What's that have to do with cyber? That's the same number of unfilled cyber jobs today. Six million. So it's like the city of Philadelphia. Yeah. So that that is that is how desperate employers are for cyber people today. Yeah. So wide open. Wide open. Yeah. That's interesting. So I mean, it's almost like a specific. I, I, and, and there's a lot of people that think. You know, and I hadn't had this question thought of before until you said that. That inspired a thought. A lot of people I've seen, I've read about, are talking about cybersecurity almost as if it's like 
this bubble that doesn't really exist. It's just the same as IT. So I, I'm, I'm glad to hear that from you that, look, I mean, this is a real need. This isn't something, this isn't snake oil. Absolutely. Right? This is something that's a specific need by a company. So Absolutely. I, I've seen that too. So, um, so with that said, what skills and credentials have you seen employers looking for in these candidates, maybe even at the entry level? Sure, sure. Um, let's start with credentialing, uh, first of all. Um, a few years ago, there was a big push for programmers, and you saw a lot of what they called these boot camps, where someone could go right out of high school and spend six months learning nothing but programming. Yeah. Um, but those had pretty well died out because the employers determined early on that the boot camps were missing two important things. Important thing number one is they weren't teaching you soft skills. Important thing number two was the individuals who got through the boot camps didn't have an overall sense of, of business and business processes and, and, and things like that. Um, and all that is to say that there are on rare occasions someone who could graduate from high school and, and get hired someplace as a security person. And yeah, But for the most part, what employers are looking for is they're looking for someone with a two-year degree, a four-year degree. Um, they're not just looking for someone who can sit down and hack. They're looking, looking for someone who has the ability to demonstrate that they know soft skills and they understand, they understand business, because that's the environment in which they're working. So my first requirement that I tell students is you gotta have your degree. Uh, that is the, the factor that employers look at that separates the wheat from the chaff. Um, that's what employers want is someone who has a degree because that shows they've had the soft skills it shows that um, they also have the tenacity, you know, to, to get through that hard class, the one that they don't like at all, but they're able to persevere. Yeah, so those are the sort of um, things that an employer would be looking for. In terms of skill set, um, most employers are looking for someone who has a really good foundation in cyber, not necessarily someone who can go in and you know, configure a Palo Alto firewall to the nth degree. Um, no, they're looking for someone who has a good foundation in cybersecurity, knows the concepts, knows the terminology, is able to do things, and then the employer will teach them the specifics about their hardware, software, and processes. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. I have heard that where I used to work, even my employer says he he'll teach you the skills. Yes, right. He just needs the passion for and, tech. Absolutely. And he needs people that are well-rounded. Yeah. Can communicate. I'm glad to hear that you recommend a degree still, because there's a lot of a lot of companies and even organizations that are saying, oh, we're looking for the cert, but I think they're being narrow sighted. They, they really are, you know? yeah. Now, certifications are important, sure. um, and if someone applies for a job and they've got a degree, but someone else applies and they've got a degree and a certification, employers always say, we look at the individual with the degree and the certification. Um, so certifications are very important, but at the top of the list is the degree. Yeah. It's an advantage. Sure. Yeah, that's a yeah. good point. So what advice would you give educators, coordinators, and administrators to, su to successfully address the need for cybersecurity talent? Wow. Um, as we already said, Robert, the, the 5.7 million open positions, something like that. So it's a tremendous need. Um, my recommendation would be to look at what's going on in the community in which the school is located. Because each community has different needs and try to partner with some existing businesses um, about cyber and what the needs are and then there can even be some tailoring of the program to those particular needs 
I mean, you may be, for instance, there are some schools I know in, you know, Virginia, outside the D.C. area, and their programs are tailored differently than those who might be, let's say, in St. Louis or something like that, because they have different environments. Um, the employers are looking for some, not entirely different, but some specialized sort of things. Um, for instance, in Virginia, you know, you'd want to look at individuals that could have um, the, 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 most of the time they're going to go into like, you know, Department of Defense or something like that and going to need some type of, of clearance. Um, so some of the programs might be geared toward meeting those needs. Um, but I would say look at what the community needs are and be able to tailor the program in that way. Um, students want, want to have really good hands-on experience in terms of cyber. So I would say also a program should look at not just opening up a book, but really being able to give students the, the hands-on skills that they need to be successful. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. yeah, I like that idea of tailored, not just, I know, I know it's good to look at what other people are doing, sure. but also look at, okay, how can we have a unique character Absolutely. in this environment yeah. because of the businesses and the people in our area that yeah. need that skill. Sure. That's good. Because those are going to be the people who are going to be hiring the students. Yeah. So let's look to see how we can craft our program to help them. Yeah. And I would imagine, because I've never actually had to work for a university, I've been a student of one, so I could get a feel for how the, the scale is different. So you guys may not just be looking at, I know you teach at Western, Western Kentucky, Kentucky University, right? Your, your area, your thinking is different there oh, because sure. you have people that may move from out of town to come there. Absolutely. So you kind of, I'm sure, I don't know, Does do you all kind of take a global perspective? Or we take more of a regional perspective, you know, because we're looking at our students who will, upon graduation, they might move to, to Nashville, they might move to Atlanta, they might move to Indianapolis, and those needs in cyber, again, are different than what you find outside of Washington, D.C. Sure. Um, and also, we have students who will then move into a master's program as well. So we kind of have to look at how we can tailor it as well to meet students who want to go to get a graduate degree. Yeah, yeah. the long term. You're right, the yeah. longer term. Yeah, that's pretty good though. Yeah. So this this was something interesting when I was in your your presentation yesterday. I had never thought of it. I heard about it at a distance, but the idea that businesses now have cyber insurance. So, um, what is cyber yeah. insurance? And what does it have to do with malware? Oh, wow. Okay. And it's a, it's a really hot area right now. It's really interesting to me. Um, cyber insurance started about 20 years ago in Lloyd's of London uh, with the first entity that offered it. And now it's about an $8 billion annual industry. So it's huge. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Um, and an organization, a business, would get cyber insurance to protect them in the event of an attack. Okay. Makes sense. Um, but what the research is showing, interestingly, is that there is a push by the cyber insurance companies when a business is the victim of ransomware to pay the ransom. Just don't even try to restore the systems from backups or anything like that. There's a real push by the cyber insurance industry. Let's just pay the ransom as quickly as possible. And they have some motivations for doing that. One is um, it gets us back to being productive right away, as fast as possible. Yeah. Um, but it's kind of nefarious a little bit too because the cyber insurance companies, if they pay the ransom right away, then they're not going to have to pay the organization for downtime, which, which, is, which is, you know, interesting. And they're not going to have to pay for the organization to hire outside security consultants to do forensics, why were we attacked, what happened, that sort of thing. Um, and one of the numbers that really sticks out in my mind is that in normal insurance, uh, there's something called the, the loss ratio. Anyway, you, you look at how many, how much premiums are coming in and how much claims are going out the door. Okay. 
and for like my car insurance, uh, it's sixty-two um, percent. So for every dollar in premiums that come in, my insurance company pays out sixty-two cents in claims. Okay. Sure. But in cyber, it's thirty-five percent. So for every dollar that comes in. They, they only pay out 35 cents in claims. claims. So, so they, they have every incentive to pay the ransom and in order to keep that percentage 35 percent. So it's, uh, it's, it's pretty funny when you, when you think about it. And there's been quite a bit of research on this. In fact, one noted cybersecurity professional executive actually said that Cyber insurance is what is keeping ransomware as popular as it is today among attackers. It's just driving it. Yeah. So, so it's cheaper to actually pay the ransom. Absolutely. Absolutely. Pay the ransom, and, but there's a real incentive for the cyber insurance to do that. You know? Yeah. So they're just making it. Yeah. And two, if, if you pay the ransom, then it encourages the attackers to do more ransomware, which encourages more organizations to buy cyber insurance, so you get this cycle going on. Which I know this is not like documented maybe, but you could think from like just a reporting perspective, that would almost give companies a incentive to then hack themselves. Absolutely. Yeah. So it's like, I, know, I don't know if that's happened, but it just seems plausible. Sure. Yeah. 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 So that's, 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 that's one of the crazy things, things going on right now. All right. So, so thank yeah. you so much. Sir, oh, thank you, Robert, for doing this. I really enjoyed it. Yeah. And, you know, cyber is just such a fascinating area. And two, it might just kind of end with cyber is not just for the profession. I mean, every person who touches technology today, which is all of us, need to have some sort of understanding of cybersecurity. I mean, it can be things as basic as making sure that your passwords are long. Because long passwords are harder to break than short, complex passwords. Most people don't know that. And thus, what happens is they just have really you know, short passwords that are easy to remember, um, which makes it easy for the attacker to break. In one of my classes, routinely, I'll, I'll take a 15-character password, and, and we'll crack it in under three seconds. seconds. Oh, wow. And, and that's that a combination of letters and numbers. And, and uh, you, you know, know, the students, students are just amazed at that. that. But, but to me, it kind of illustrates the fact we've got to do a better job in teaching everybody about cyber. Not just security professionals. Yeah, yeah they, they desperately need it. But just... Generally speaking, you know, everybody needs to be aware of cyber and what it takes to be secure about. Yeah, yeah. Because we're all using computers. Absolutely, yeah. 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 Thank you very much. I recommend for all you that are watching, um, my students and others, um, to check out Western Kentucky, but also check out some of the books and the publications that uh, Dr. Mark has been writing. And you can, as you can tell, he's got a wealth of knowledge. So. Uh, research some of, some some of his work. work. Have, Have a good, good one. one. Great. Great. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Thanks. 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 Thanks.